Hi, I'm Danny and these are my diecast disasters. In this video I'm going to be making a crash scene diorama out of this quite beat up old Chevy Blazer and a GMC Wrecker. Now, both of these are Matchbox and they're both from the 80s. The Wrecker was first produced in 1987 and they're still making it now and the Chevy Blazer was first produced in 1984 and just like the Wrecker this model is still being made today this particular Wrecker is the original models produced from 1987 until 1994 and the Blazer again it was the first model released back in 1987 and they produced it until 1994. So I'm sure plenty of 80s kids would have owned these two toys together with the same paint jobs on them. I'm not sure exactly what model of Chevy truck this wrecker is based on but hopefully someone can tell us in the comments down below. So let's have a closer look at our cars. And here is our extremely beat up Chevy Blazer. I don't know quite what's happened to this. It's been trodden on or had something really heavy dropped on it. Anyway, it's truly deserving of the title Diecast Disaster. I do have a few of these. It's not a particularly rare model. And this one is quite uniquely squashed. I really think it looks like it has had a real accident. The bent wheels there and just the way it's been folded up. And so this gave me the idea to use it as a crashed vehicle. And then I tracked down this wrecker truck. So it could be in the diorama come to tow the Chevy away. This little model's not in nearly as bad condition. It's all there, just fairly play-worn. It's missing a lot of paint. Most of the chrome's been rubbed off the base there. And it's also got that pretty horrible yellow windscreen, which I'm not that keen on. Now we know what we're working with, we can crack on and start taking the models apart. I'll start by drilling out the rivet posts holding them together. There's two on the blazer here. And here we go, with those drilled out, I can take it apart. It's kind of falling apart on me a bit, but I'll make sure I keep all the bits. There's another wee rivet holding the windscreen in. I try to drill this out, but my drill is just slipping around too much, so I remove it with a round burr on my rotary tool. The GMC here also has two posts. See that toe arm there has a sort of leaf spring mechanism on the bottom of it. I 
And again, there's a wee rivet holding the windscreen in. And there was also a little plastic rivet holding this rear deck in. And they were both drilled out carefully. There we go, now I can take those two bodies and strip the paint off with some poly stripper. There it is, melting all the paint on them. I just wash it off with some water and here they are. 99% of the paint is gone, but they've got a bit of oxidation on them, so I'll give them a clean up with a wire brush on my rotary tool. So here they are looking nice and clean and shiny. You'll notice here that the windscreen is also part of the rear of the cab there and the lights so I'm going to have to cut that section off. There we go. I guess it's the rear window, but I don't want yellow windows, so I'm just going to be painting over it. And the tabs to keep the front axle in place are also attached to the windscreen, so I'm going to cut them off as well. I'll just have to glue them back in place later. And I'm also going to hold on to the windscreen here because I'll use it as a template to cut myself out a new clear windscreen later. Now I can move on with painting the wrecker. I begin with an undercoat of white. And then mask off the body of the truck leaving the roof there and the bonnet. And I'll paint this a nice green colour. I'm imagining this tow truck works near the mountain or a national park or something. So off with my masking here. And there we go with the green part of the truck. Next I mask off the deck of the truck. And I'll be painting this black. And here it is with the masking removed. It's coming out quite nice. Next I paint in some details like the lights and the mirrors there. And I've printed out these decals for the project. Some 24 hour towing decals there. I'm going to Put these onto the wreck truck. Once I was finished applying all my decals and doing the detailing, I finished all with a nice coat of gloss varnish. Onto the base of the wrecker now. I want to get rid of this old worn out chrome, so it's going to go in some hot water with a little bit of caustic soda. This will take the chrome right off in a couple of minutes. Then I can rinse it off with some fresh water, and here it is. This was then painted black. And rather than painting this particular time, I'm just going to finish off with a heavy application of silver weathering powder. This will bring out all the details.
This was fixed with a satin varnish. Onto the other plastic parts. They're pretty filthy, so I'll begin by giving them a good wash in some hot soapy water. That's looking a lot cleaner. Now I can move on with painting them. So I'll start out with the deck and the toe arm. These are both painted black. And I finished the deck off there with a really light application of the metallic weathering powder. I just want it to look a little bit worn. For the light section I mask off the lights on top because I want to keep those and then I paint that rear window there black. The wheels for the GMC actually aren't in the worst condition, but I'm still going to be swapping them out for some nicer ones. So these are just some newer Matchbox wheels. I am going to customize them a little bit though by painting the rims white. And then I'm going to add some dust weathering powder to them before I give them a coat of matte varnish. I've used some clear plastic here to cut out a replacement windscreen. And I've also scavenged an interior for it here. So here are all the parts of our wrecker truck refurbished and repainted and ready to go back together. Before we take a look at the finished truck we'll just take a look back at what we started with. Our worn out looking old GMC wrecker. Missing a lot of paint there. Missing even more chrome. It's got those tired looking old wheels on it and it's also got that terrible yellow windscreen. And here it is after our custom makeover. It's definitely looking a lot flasher now with its white and green paint job and black deck and toe arm there. It's also been detailed, given a clear windscreen and interior, and it's had some nice new decals put on it. I'm definitely happy with how this has come out. It's definitely looking a lot more the part for my diorama. You can let me know what you think of it in the comments down below. Now I'll move on with the Chevy Blazer. I begin with a coat of white primer. Really gives you a chance to get a good look at all of those bends and dents that it's had put in it. I'm going to paint the Blazer in a nice light green colour. Next I mask off the rear canopy of the truck. To get a good result when you're masking, just try to be really thorough and make sure you double and triple check all of your lines before you spray. And here's our blazer with the masking removed. It's looking pretty good, I won't have to touch that up. And I've made some four-wheel drive adventure decal signs to go on the doors.
Now I'm going to paint in some metal patches where the paint has chipped off. And I'm just going to paint a little bit of lighter green around one edge of the cracked paint just to help it pop a little bit more. And here's the body of our blazer after I've finished the chipping and given a coat of gloss. Onto the plastic parts of the blazer now. Crikey, they're a bit filthy. So once again, these are given a wash in some hot soapy water. And here they are looking a lot cleaner and ready for some painting. I'm going to start out with the base there by painting it all black. Next I painted the rims there silver and I'm going to give it the same heavy metallic weathering powder treatment as the GMC. Might have noticed that one of the other set of wheels was missing, so I've just got some replacement ones here. They're in just as crappy old condition. These were just painted black and then I detailed the rims in silver and they were given a black wash. Here is the interior after a coat of white primer. I then painted it in a leather brown. And then I detailed it a little bit, like the steering wheel and those straps in the back, and it was given a mid-tone wash. And here are all the parts of our Chevy Blazer, repainted and ready to go back together again. So let's just have a quick look back at what we started with. A true die-cast disaster of a Chevy Blazer here. I don't know what's happened to it. But let's just say it's sheriffing days are over and it's ready to retire in a relaxing diorama. And here it is, our finished crashed Chevy Blazer. It's been cleaned up and detailed and that terrible old chipped paint job is long gone replaced with a nice light green. I think it gives it a really good outdoorsy look. Again you can let me know what you think of it in the comments down below. 
So perhaps it's someone who takes people out on four wheel drive adventures or maybe it's a rental four wheel drive. They've taken it for a drive off into the country or maybe up into the mountains over the gravelly roads. Maybe they were driving a bit too fast or a bit carelessly and they've slid off the road and rolled a couple of times. They didn't have any cell phone coverage but luckily a passing motorist picked them up and took them back to town where they could call a tow truck to go and tow the wrecked 4x4 out. So let's go about creating our scene. We'll start with a few layers of this foam here sort of marked in roughly where I want my road to be and I'm going to use my foam cutter to cut it out. I then glue all the pieces of foam together. Now I'm going to start building it up. I'll start with the road surface here because I want that to be quite level. Just using some spackling filler here. I'll get it pretty much as smooth as I can and then it is left to dry. It takes maybe two or three hours to dry fully. While that's drying I use the time to make myself some plaster rocks. These are just some rubber rock molds and I'm using some plaster of Paris here. And once these had fully set and my road bed was all fully dried, I glued a load of them on in place where I wanted them to be. These are just glued on with some PVA glue. And again it's all left to set really well. Now I'm going to use some more of the filler to build up the rest of the diorama. I'll be working around the rocks there because I want them to be sticking out. And here it is after it's all been filled in with the filler and it's been left overnight to dry. It's all pretty hard now. The edges are a little bit rougher than I like there, so I give them a quick sand down. I think I'm using 220 grit sandpaper here. Now I'll start adding some colour. I'll begin with a black wash on the stones there. You'll notice it soaks into the plaster quite well. After the black wash I applied a blue wash all over them. And once this was all well dried I gave them a dry brushing with some white paint. This will bring out all the details in the rocks and give them a much more realistic look. With the rocks done, the next step is to paint all of the dirt. I'm using a burnt umber here. It's just a cheap artist's acrylic, costs a couple of dollars a tube. You don't need to use flash paints for these parts of your diorama. So I paint the whole thing brown, just avoiding the rocks that I've already painted.
And here it is, all painted brown. The paint's dried now, so I can move on. I'm gonna add some smaller rock piles to it. I've got these nice scree rocks that I've collected from up in the mountains. They've got really nice angles on them, even when they're really small, so they look really realistic. I'm gonna use this PVA glue here, painted on quite thickly where I want my rock piles to be. And I can add my rocks. I'll start with larger ones and then I fill up the spaces by sprinkling on some smaller ones. And once all my rocks were in place, I left it to dry and I could tip it up and any loose ones would fall off. Now they're not the same color as the other rocks, so I'm gonna give them all a light coat of this blue-gray here. And then a white dry brushing and this makes them look pretty similar to the other rocks around them. Right, so there's our rock piles done. Now I'm going to paint the road bed in a grey. Next I'm going to make the dirt areas look more realistic with some real dirt. I start by painting on a layer of PVA glue. I've watered it down a little bit here so it's easier to spread out. And this is some dirt that I've dug out from my garden and then I dried it out really well in the oven for half an hour or so and then I've sieved it down really fine and I'm just going to sprinkle it all over the glued areas. I can then tip off any excess and here it is with a nice dirt texture all over. Next I'm going to add the base for my gravel road. So again, I'm going to paint glue all over the road surface here. And now I'm going to add a layer of this sand here. Now this sand is actually from a big gravel pile on my property. I've collected some of it and sieved it out so I've got larger and smaller selections. And this is the finest sandy stuff. Again the excess was tipped off and it was left to dry. Now I'm going to add some larger gravel and stones around the edges of the road. Just painting my glue on here where I want them to be. And here's a selection of slightly larger stones from the gravel pile.
And once I was happy with the amount of larger stones, I filled up the gaps again with some more of the sand. And finally, I added one more layer of dirt lightly around the edge of the road here just to help blend it in. When I was all happy with my dirt and rocks, I saturated it with some scenic cement. This will just help to seal it all in and keep it in place. While this was all drying, I thought it was a good time to put together some trees. For these trees, I'm going to be starting out with some Woodland Scenics tree armatures. I begin by trimming off the sprues with my craft knife here. Next you bend them into a nice shape. These armatures end up costing about a dollar each I think for the larger ones and a bit less for the smaller ones. And they are quite a nice, quick, easy option rather than making wire trees, which is quite a bit of fun, but it does take a long time. There we go, that's looking quite good I think. Now I'm going to add some finer branches. I've got some sea foam here, I'm just going to break it up a little bit. It's quite delicate so you have to be sort of careful with it. Now I'm going to paint some tacky glue onto the branches of my armature here. And then I can glue on my pieces of sea foam. This can take a little while depending on how well you want to try and do it. You have to kind of try to line up the stems of the sea foam with the branches of the armature. And here it is finished. I made a selection of these and then I saturated them in the scenic cement. And once they had dried it just toughened up the sea foam a little bit. Next I sprayed them all with some burnt umber. It's just a couple of light coats to sort of even up the colour all over them.
to add some foliage to them I'm going to use some spray on adhesive just spray it over the branches there should be trying to avoid the trunk a little bit better than I am here but it's a bit tricky through the camera and now I can sprinkle on my foliage here I'm using a couple of different blends of flocking here for my foliage, but there's all sorts of things you can use. So I did all of the trees and they were left to dry for a few hours and then I applied another coat of foliage over the top. Back to the diorama now, it's all fully dried and it's time to start adding some grass to it. I'm going to start with a base of scatter grass, so I paint on my glue where I want it to go. I'm using tacky glue to apply the grass because it stays sticky for a bit longer than the PVA. The scatter grass is just sprinkled on. The grass that doesn't stick is just tipped off and I can reuse it later. Once this was dried it was time for some static grass. I'm going to start out adding a few patches of longer dead grass. So I've put my patches of glue on and now I'm going to use my static grass applicator to apply some of this longer brown grass. I'll be honest it didn't really stand out as much as I would have liked at the end of the diorama so next time I might put it on afterwards. Next I'm going to add my main grass which is a knock wild grass blend. So again, painting on my tacky glue here. And it's on with the wild grass. So I sprinkle on all of my wild grass until the applicator is empty and then I can tip off all of the stuff that hasn't stuck and put it back in the applicator and apply some more. I do it about three or four times to have a nice thick covering. And it's finished off with some patches of shorter browner grass around the edges of the wild grass patches. Next I'm going to add some tire marks into my gravel road. I'm using some ground up pastel here. It's just a tan colour. Next I can add the trees to the diorama. Just got my cars there to help me position them. 
I make some little holes in the diorama where I want them to stick in and I'm using some PVA glue to glue them in place. There we go, the trees are in place. Now I'll wait for the glue to dry. And then I'm just going to build up around the base of them here with a little bit more glue and a bit of dirt. Dug up this little piece of root from my garden here and dried it out in the oven. And I'm just going to cut off a couple of little bits and glue them in here and there. A couple on the bank here by the road. So I'm coming out from this tree here. And for a final touch, I'm just going to add a few little bushes here and there made out of some clumping foliage. So there we go, I just had to weather my cars a little bit and put them in place. So thanks heaps for hanging in there and it's finally time for the reveal of the finished diorama. And here it is, our gravel road crash scene diorama. Featuring our Matchbox GMC Wrecker and our totaled Chevy Blazer. I really hope you like how it came out. You can let me know what you think in the comments down below. And just before I go, I'll take a moment to welcome all of my new subscribers and say a big thanks to everyone for the awesome likes and comments on my videos. Extra special thanks to my awesome Patreon supporters. If you'd like to join them and help support the channel, help me keep making cool videos like this for you to watch, you can check out my Patreon page. There'll be a link in the description below. Thanks heaps for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, remember to give it a thumbs up, subscribe and hit the bell and share it with your friends.